How much money do you think Harry drops at a strip club in a night? I've only seen him once. He likes Russian women, I know that. And the Russian women are, are deadly because he'll drop maybe a hundred bucks in the course of a couple dances in a row. But I've never seen him uh, actually. He's not a real big strip club guy, but when he's there, he partakes. He doesn't go out of his way, but when he's there and he sees something that he likes, he does uh, obviously take, take care of business, you know what I'm saying? How would you describe Harry? Harry's a weird dude. He's a very weird dude. And I mean that with all due respect. I mean, I love Harry. Harry's a quirky guy. Is that bad, quirky? No, it's good. No, Harry's, Harry's the kind of guy you really don't, you never know him. Because I think there's a, a part of him that he'll never let you see. I'm the complete opposite. I mean, what I am, what you see is what you get. I'm, I'm the same way off the air, on the air. I don't know if Harry is. I don't know what Harry does on the sectional. And I want to go see one night. I want to be on the sectional with him. And preferably be with a woman, too, not just Harry and I. What was it like working at the Olympics? Most fun I ever had covering the Olympics was in 1984 when I went to Sarajevo, Yugoslavia. Because I'm, here I am in the middle of nowhere. It took forever to get there because you, could, you had to fly from, we flew from New York to London, from London to Berlin, Berlin to, I forget which town in Yugoslavia, and it was still Yugoslavia. And then we took an overnight train, and it took us two days to get to, uh, to, get to Sarajevo. Yugoslavia from New York City and that was fun because it was scary because people were walking around with machine guns civil war was in the air everybody knew that sooner or later everything was going to break loose and there was going to be problems but fortunately we got through the Olympics no one was uh, no incidents happened no terrorism but it was weird because you can go to a hockey game for three dollars back then so you're covering the Olympic hockey you're thinking oh but the people had no money we're in the middle of nowhere it was freezing cold and it was, as a journalist, it was fun because I had never done anything that crazy before. And being in a foreign country where you're worried about gunfire breaking out or your life being in jeopardy. Plus, I learned serbo Croatian too and ate goat. So, I mean, there's not many jobs you can do that. Do you still know some? No, not really, no. If, if, if now, like, if a Yugoslavian woman came in, like one of Harry's friends from the Penthouse Club came in, I could probably, like, fake a conversation. I understand some, but I couldn't have an entire conversation. How did you and Miss Robin come to start working together? We met in a swing club one night. We were at uh, we were out swinging, and there were all these naked people around. And I said, you know, she's tall. And tall naked women look good. Short naked women look good too. But and then I said, you know what? Let's go home and let's practice some radio. No, no, actually, she was she was in PR and marketing, and I was doing radio. <laughs> the other story, the actual, the real story, is not as interesting as the swing club one. I thought that was funny. We're no, it was, no, she's uh, she was in L.A. and working around and uh, we met and we started talking. She was working for a really crazy movie producer and then she lost that job and she started to come in and hang out in the radio studio with me and wanted to learn about radio and watch so she had no radio background and I would put her on the air to just do bits here and there or do crazy voices and, and then all of a sudden she became a part of the show and that's what happened. And now she's a major media star and, uh, and we'll be available for autographs after the session today. However, if you'd like uh, flat objects, if you'd like autograph photos, you have to go through me to get those. Though. Who is your man crush? Mm, I don't have a man crush, though. I mean, I like a lot of guys. I, I mean, I see a really, really good-looking guy. Like, when we met uh, What's-His-Face at the Super Bowl, uh, the guy who, What's his name? Oh, no. Wolverine. Hugh Jackman. Hugh, not Hugh Jackson. Hugh Jackson's the head coach of the Raiders, man. Come on, guys. Hugh Jackman, right? I mean, he's a short guy, but he's a really good-looking guy. And I'm saying, boy, if I was that good-looking, imagine the women I'd get. You know, I mean, he's happily married, but he's a really good... I don't I don't mind looking at a guy and saying, that's a good-looking guy. You know, I'd rather look at a good-looking woman, but I don't really have man crush. I don't have a man crush on anybody. I see guys who take care of themselves. Hey, this good-looking guy, but I don't say, I want to be that guy or be with that guy or uh, get wasted with that No, I'd get wasted with these guys. Because imagine if you're out, you know, at a bar, you know, you're going to have women who just can't get them and then they're going to come to me. You know, that's that's what I think about when I think about that stuff. Sloppy seconds. Not sloppy seconds, no. Because they'd have to be with that guy first for it to be sloppy seconds. I mean, I'd get just the, the, the hangers on that aren't hot enough that he wouldn't want that I would, you know, you know what I mean? Do you have a favorite chick flick? I hate chick flicks. I won't go see romantic comedies. I did see your movie, though, but I only saw the scene that you were in, though. What was the name of that movie again in Atlantic City? The Bounty Hunter, that uh, Jennifer Aniston, because she's my... Jennifer Aniston drives me up the wall. I can't see Jennifer Aniston movies. Literally. 
I will. If, it's a, if I'm flipping around and the Jennifer Aniston movie is on TV, I will. I can't get to the remote fast enough. I don't know what it is. I don't hate her personally. I just there's something about her. So even though you were in the Bounty Hunter, <laughs> and even though I just got, I fast forwarded to the scene that you were in down in Atlantic City at the Borgata, right? Isn't that where you filmed it? It was at the Trump. The top of was it the Trump? Yeah. Are you sure? And then I fast forward, but I'm, I'm not. I hate romantic comedies. When I go to the movies, I don't want to see something that could really happen. I want to escape. I don't want to see guys arguing with their girlfriends. If I want to see that, I'll just go next door to the people who live next door to me who argue all the time, or other married people, or go visit my sisters who argue all the time. I don't want to pay to go see people argue. I want to say pay to see things blow up. You know what I mean? Is there one celebrity that you're close enough with to call up and get drinks? Uh, well, the Dos I actually met the Dosecki guy. Tell us about that. It was, uh, he was huge, and I was at a dinner in L.A. at a gala, and there was a red carpet, so all these celebrities are walking in, and all of a sudden, here comes the Dos Equis guy, and, and it's funny, all these big stars are there, and the red entertainment tonight, and everybody's walking on the red carpet getting interviewed, and I was just a member of the media there, I wasn't on the red carpet, and at the end of the red carpet, I had my set up there where I would get the guests to come over to me, and all the people that were there, he was the most pie, everybody was interviewing the Dos Equis guy, and then we find out, he sat down, that he can't say, stay thirsty, my friends. And he's a Jewish guy from New York. Jonathan Goldsmith is his name. And he lives on a boat in Marina del Rey, California. And he's just a struggling actor who's been around forever, auditioned for this TV commercial to be the Dos Equis guy. And then when I asked him to do the, 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 the signature phrase, he says, I'm not allowed to do it. I'm legally not allowed to say, stay thirsty, my friends, because it's not his voice. And I guess the company says if he, if he doesn't do it, he can't even pretend to do it because he won't sound anything like... Because they use Maximilian Schell, the actor, is the voice that they actually dub in when he says, stay, thir stay thirsty, my friend. So that's what I learned. And he was a cool guy, and his wife was very nice, and he invited me to go out to breakfast with him. But we didn't have any beers right. But at 8 o'clock in the morning, I'm not drinking Dos Equis. I'm sorry. Thanks, Tony. After that interview, I need a Dos Equis. Stay thirsty, my friends. What up? You have the script for this? Yeah. Uh oh, who's got a Gmail? <laughs> Robin, turn that damn phone off. <laughs> We're not gonna mess a good take because you have a phone call coming in. I'm good. <laughs> Just don't come in cleat high. Okay. Like they, you know when the guys slide in with the spikes up. <laughs> God, I got I got white socks on today. I'm just bumming today. And Matt is your undershirt, that's good. I know, that's yeah, good luck. Are you ready? We rolling, Matt? But don't don't crash it into this. <laughs> you rolling? Three, two, one. <laughs> Alright, we're rolling, so. Am look I good? shiny now? Do I look okay? No, you're not. Do I look good? I think you look good. So fresh and sick No, I'm not. They don't, you can't play Tony Bruno in the Madden game. Oh, okay. Only I can play Tony Bruno in the Madden game. There is a special, there is a secret code, though, if you go in, but I'll give that to you later. Okay. Only you will know that. Thank you. So, what was it like? There's a cheat code. <laughs> In Madden. <laughs> um, Do you speak Italian, by the way? Some, not a lot. Um, How about you... French? Some, some of it. <laughs> so now we're going to go into a different thing. Where are we going now? You hosted. Where do we go? Are we doing it in the other room? A different direction. Are you awake in there, man? <laughs> Is this exciting stuff or what? Okay. Are we still rolling? We're still rolling. Is there tape in there? Mm -hmm. How long is the tape in this little DVR so we're thing? We're good. We're good. Is it mini disc or mini DVR? I've never been arrested. I've never killed anybody or hurt anybody. So I'm, you know, I'm just, uh, what am I? What am I? McAlpins? What am I, man? Are we running this whole interview or are we just taking cuts out we're of it? We're going to take cuts. Oh, okay, so good. <laughs> well, after that, I need to do Secchi's. Oh, I'm lifted. I'm sorry. <laughs>